Right, something new, something a little bit completely different to what I've done before. Uh, let me just introduce who's here. So, obviously, me, Jay Kicks, we've got Steve Brown, and then Wayne Johns. Uh, you should be familiar with all of us by now, uh, especially if you've watched any of the previous videos I've done. I you know, recently interviewed Wayne Johns and Steve Brown about their work, but we're all on the um, Team Bowens team, so that's how we sort of know each other, and we just started to throw around some ideas about you know, starting a new project and what can we do. And we sort of just thought it would be a nice idea maybe to just put together a podcast, interview, sort of vlog type, just sort of monthly, weekly, we're not even sure yet. We want to put together a project that covers a lot of, a lot, a lot of things in the, in the photographic spectrum. And I think one of the ones that we mentioned was, you know, like you were saying, Steve, that it's maybe not too many people doing this in the UK, like you said. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of American podcasts and shows and YouTube channels and things like that and that's really it's great and it's really useful mm. to watch those things but when you actually work in a different market a different part of the world um, it can feel quite distant and so it's quite nice to there's maybe, a lot of differences yeah, yeah and there's a yeah. lot of differences in the type of work available and the markets and how, how everything you know works as an industry and so it's quite nice to maybe think about trying to reflect what's happening in this part of the world yeah, like the as yeah. well as mm -hmm. in America. Yeah. And also, like you're saying about interviewing, you know, people, you know, from yeah. our, you know, doing doing different things over here. And from the, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's nothing against what what the Americans do with their podcast or anything like that. Nothing at all. You know, in fact, we just want to sort of emulate that. You know, love what they do, and uh, we just want to sort of try and bring a bit more focus to some people over here and I'm not saying that there's nobody in the UK doing that please I'm not saying that but uh, it, it, nobody springs to mind so if you know of guys doing it already here in the UK you know definitely want to he hear about those and get in touch with them I'm happy to do that but yeah for it, nothing nobody spring to, sprang to mind as it were um, but for this first one what we wanted to do is just you know introduce ourselves and have a chat about what we're going to be what we're planning to do and also we had like a sort of agenda like a mini agenda for this first video which was we were going to each talk about one of our images and sort of discuss, fire questions, get some feedback from one another and like how were they shot, what were the, some of the problems you encountered, why did you take it, was there a brief, wasn't there a brief, was it personal, you know, just, just to get some, you know, sort of raw knowledge about you know, the story behind each of our images, do that. And then we just wanted to talk about just a piece of gear that we sort of love and use, you know, day to day and why we use it and why we would recommend it, think it's good, that sort of thing. And then maybe just finish up with just a, you know, something that inspires us as shooters. You know, what do, you know, from, yeah, it could be anything, videos, podcasts, books, anything like that, just something inspirational, end on something mm. inspirational. Um, so that's what we're planning to do, was we'll start there. Uh, but we'd like to open it to you guys as well. If you've got any ideas of things that you think that we could try, people that you think are oh, Jake, Steve, Wayne, whatever, interview, a, B, C, D person, definitely, you know, let us know the names. We want to get in, we want to get in touch with loads of people in our industry, whether it be, you know, makeup artists that you've worked with or, you know, maybe a stylist or designer that I've worked with, maybe, you know, one of one of your art directors, something like that. Just get like a, like, you know, not, it's not just about photographers talking to photographers, you know, because that can get, you can get a little bit samey. So, yeah, anybody like that, you think, you know, who works in our industry. Yeah. There's a lot, lot of elements to our industry. In there. It's huge. Especially we're in different genres as well. It's uh, there's a lot of different people doing different things. Mm. So, or you know, the makeup hour, our own shoots, yeah, and our own business. So, yeah, getting that, getting those people in. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of names to attach to a photo, really. But mm. you know, quite often it's just that it's just that our name at the bottom. But it is, yeah. it's not really fair. You know, a lot of the time. Um, yeah, I was going to say in a, in any photo shoot there are all sorts of people always. coming together yeah. to yeah. to bring that final result, and it's quite nice to talk to those different people, yeah. and for people who are wanting to become a photographer, to hear maybe an interview with a, an art director or an art buyer or someone who commissions photography and saying how they approach things and mm -hmm. what they're looking for, and you know how they you've never dealt with them. You yeah, just, yeah, you, you don't know how to get in touch with people yeah. or what they're looking for or. The age-old you know, question, what yeah, does yeah. an art director actually yeah. do? Yeah. Sort of, you know, just covering the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's an insight as well for those people that perhaps don't know the industry of you know, the steps they've got to go through yeah. to be able to get up to the commercial standard in, in our industry as well. People may not know those elements of that process. Mm -hmm. So it's good, good for that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay.
so yeah um, messages comments anything like that recommendations definitely let us know when we hear about it but let's kick off the first section then right so let's get into the first section we'll talk about each of our images uh, I'll go I'll go first you go first. brave you go first <laughs> you know, rip lamb it. to the slaughter you know, rip it out of, <laughs> out of mine and then you know I can return the favour in a second uh, so yeah this first image uh, and uh, surprise, surprise, it's a gel shot. It's, um, it's unusual kind of for you, Jake. It is landscape, so it's a little bit different uh, than normally do. Uh, but this shot, you know, we actually shot this uh, when I was in the US last year for my RGG video. And I think the reason why I wanted to speak about this particular image was this was just a totally white room. This was like, a, this was like you know, in a big, you know, had wall to wall windows on one side, and it's just, it was pure white walls, you've got a white rug, and you know, it's a really minimalistic sort of environment when you walk in. And I think it's sometimes as part of our jobs, really, is you know, we, we have to visualize something. We have to mm. really pre-visualize it before we press the button. So you know, I know a lot of your stuff, you end up shooting in like warehouses mm. and, you know, and that sort of stuff, and it's like you set everything up, and it's like you've got to walk into this empty, cold warehouse and go, how am I going to make this look? You know, yes. Interesting, that sort of thing. And I think, you know, and it's a similar sort of thing here, even though this is a beautiful location, you know, phenomenal apartment area, it's still just all white walls. So for me, when I'm working, it works, you know, go in and I'm looking at really just planes that I can light. So whether it be you know here you can see on my left hand wall I'm going to have you know this sort of this peachy pinky color gel here and then the wall behind there is going to be another another gel and then I'm going to see the you know, that carpet I'm going to put another gel on that so it's you know about visualizing you know am I going to I'm going to paint these planes as it were with these with these colors um, and even though this is an environment or a location shoot I I still use the same principle when I'm photographing models. So, so for me, it's like a, a key light that, that's the top. That's one plane, mm. and like a fill light is another plane, you know, from below. And then the sides are like two more planes, and that's how I sort of, you know, visualize my lighting. It's just, you know, like I said, it's the same thing here with this location shoot. Interesting. Type of shoe. Interesting. Yeah. So, color wise on this, then, what what gels have you got in this shot? Then, is that myriad of Okay. De yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. There. That's the first thing I think. Because there's a lot going on there, isn't there? There is. Yeah. So let's. Uh, let's. It's just going to come back to me at any moment now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, like I said, I've got I've got a pink gel uh, on on the left, here, like a peachy orange gel on the left. That is like that job is to light that wall there. And how how many lights in this shot? Twelve. Uh, we can we we can work out <laughs> as we go along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely got definitely got that and then uh, I think I've got another pink light coming in here you can see the pink light hitting the model and that's also lighting the, um, the, the white rug down here okay so in the shadow you can see that that's pink so that's coming from this pink light that's just out of shot on the left here and then I've got a blue light just a camera right and you can see that hitting the sofa there yeah on the right hand side and that's obviously hitting the model on camera right and then that's lighting the the blue wall or the white wall behind it and then I've got one white light that's straight onto the model's face there so that's picking out okay. her features in there as opposed to being all, all coloured yeah it's nice nice, it's very nice. when and you approach something like this are you are you trying to tell a particular story with it or are you basically coming at it from a purely aesthetic point of view you know is it is the fact of who the model is, or, you know, how the model looks, and what kind of character she's playing in the shot. Does that factor into it, or is it almost treating her as almost part of the set? You know, it's a kind of a purely yeah, no, it's a really good question. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it's, no, it's a really, really good question. Because some art is about all about story, and some art is just about visuals and you know aesthetics. Mm -hmm. And I always find it quite interesting how different people approach those things. So, this particular shoot, there was like the theme was having. There was, I think it was two models on the day and I was shooting a, a whole series with, with this model that were a little bit lighter, so the colours were more pastel-y, uh, the tones were, you know, were a little bit, not cooler, but you know, it definitely was sort of, you know, more pastel-y and the, and the mm. environments were quite bright and white and that sort of thing. And then we had the opposite, which was the, the other model, was all photographed in very dark locations with, and the, the colours was, was, you know, like deep reds and blues and more neon colours and that sort of thing. And it was that, supposed to be that, sort of showing 
a, you know, maybe a girl at, at home and then the girl that's out and about. You know, is, is that showing that difference okay. between you know her at home and then the other shots where she was in a in a bar setting and that sort yeah. of stuff? It was showing a, you know, just trying to show that sort of not yin yeah. and yang. I really want to get, don't want to say that, but you know what I mean, that yeah, light and dark type yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that was the sort of main mm. main main thinking behind. Because it's quite interesting. It's got this almost Lynchian. Okay. feel to it yeah, yeah. with the you know obviously the, the furniture is this kind of really blocky minimalist uh, you know vintage furniture and there's this kind the of very and seals, yeah, so yeah. And there's a leather sofa and there is stark background with this strange thing leaning against the wall for no particular reason and, yeah that was yeah. so, so that, so that uh, is actually cool. a mirror but obviously, right. obviously it's just oh, it's, obviously it's just reflecting that yeah. colour there but yeah. it's like a sheet of plywood or something yeah yeah it is yeah and it was <laughs> you know and it, I mean it weighed a ton and we I think we did take it out at one point like, well we thought yeah. about it but it was you know we just wanted yeah. to have something, well, something okay. but it's was, not distracting yeah, anyway. yeah. No, it just breaks up the, the starkness of the background yeah, the blandness yeah. Yeah. yeah it adds a bit of texture to it but having that slight oddness and uh, and then the lighting on her face is almost quite makes her look quite alien. You know, it's, it's uh, maybe not super high lighting. It's almost kind of at the level of her. Oh, I hear what you're saying. Face. It's almost that kind of slightly mm -hmm. slightly strange feel to it, which is is really nice. It just kind of has that sort of um, yeah David Lynch kind of feel to okay. me, um, yeah. which just is nicer than just kind of. And just here looking sexy at you it's yeah, kind of yeah. got something to it it's it's else, yeah. interesting stuff going on in it and it's also interesting is obviously the, where the colour of your gels is now mixing colour from the, the objects that it's hitting like the colour of your sofa mm -hmm. I mean yeah. you'd look at that and think that's like a tan or a brown mm. and then you've got the, the mix of your colour across there which is giving it a different colour cast yeah. completely yes. Interesting depth, and on in you know, world. and on geometric shapes like that, whether it be the table or the sofa and that sort of thing, I'm <clears throat> I'm constantly trying to make sure that I'm lighting it from both sides. So, for example, I didn't, I wouldn't want pink coming on this side and blue coming on this side of the same plane. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because that would start to just get messy. messy. Mm, yeah. Messy. So I'm, you know, I'm I'm separating the gels yeah. the whole time. Yeah, yeah. With everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I've found that before with lighting a thing that it, it has its own colour with coloured light, mm. some things just don't work. That's you can cool. put yeah. as much, you know, blue light into a brown, you know, brown Stuff object, like that, you really know, cool, and, yeah. it, and it just doesn't, nothing happens because it's just no light absorbing it. Yeah. Well. yeah, and then you put something else on the same object, and it just is amazing. Yeah. It looks incredible. Dark wood is like I get stung by it so many times I think oh no that's no, got texture I'll be able to get some colour on that yeah, yeah. the amount of times I get stung by trying to like light mahogany or something like that yeah. with gels it just, 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 just nothing just comes sucks out. it up yeah. Yeah, there's just yeah. nothing in there yeah. it's really difficult yeah um, and conversely things that are super shiny a lot of the time you're only really lighting the highlight you know what I mean mm. so it's quite it's like if you're like, like a white car you can't just shine a blue light at it and turn it blue mm. you know what I mean you have to sort of yeah bathe it in this it'll have to bounce, maybe bounce it off a white wall behind you it put it so into a glow don't exactly, you yeah, bathe yeah, it in yeah. a glow of light yeah. Yeah. so we've if, discovered why Jake wears grey sweaters <laughs> because it's, the, he can always light himself with, and it perfectly you know comes out as he expected yeah it's true yeah, it's just, yeah. I mean it is well, obviously I can stand in there it's just to take a white balance yeah. like, you're like your own, your own grey card grey sweaters he's a walking grey card <laughs> see I thought I was mad yeah <laughs> <laughs> so if you're a hidden yeah. genius. Cool. Okay, so let's let's have a look at yours, Steve. Mm. Okay. Quite different. Nice Very. studio. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice set build. <laughs> nice set build. <laughs> this was a shot in Nepal, um, where I went earlier this year. And I actually went to a, a different region of Nepal, um, the Kumbu, which leads up to the valleys that lead up to Everest. Um, but while I was out there, I got a call to go and work on a TV show that was shooting out there. Um, and so I went to a different region called uh, the Dolakar region, uh, which was very badly hit by the 2015 earthquake. And we were shooting in a village that had been um, hit very badly by the earthquake. And there was a day off in the shooting schedule while I was there. And so rather than just you know, sit around and read a book or whatever, I went down into the village on my own 
and did a series of portraits of people who actually live in the village um, and just literally walked the streets and, and if I saw someone interesting I would go up and say do you mind if I take your portrait I had a, a local guy with me that could translate so that I could actually speak to people and uh, this lady was um, just there and she uh, heard some of her neighbours were there as well which was good because she, she couldn't even really speak Nepalese, she had some kind of speech problem, so um, communication was almost impossible with her. Um, but we could explain what we wanted to do, and then she could kind of indicate that she she was okay with that. And she had the little baby and the young girl, and then she also had a, a young, a slightly older boy um, who was paralysed, um, and so he was in, inside. Um, and they brought him out, and we did a little family portrait mm-hmm. for them as a favour. Um, is this, this is her home? Sorry, but this is no. I think this is like almost the one of the local shops. Uh, okay, it's the corner okay, shop. Okay, okay. Um, but you, can, I mean, you can just see at the top. There's the, the corrugated yeah, tin, yeah. and almost all the houses and, and buildings that were actually functional in the village were made out of this corrugated iron because it all the beautiful old three hundred year old gone. stone houses that people actually lived in until a couple of years ago gone. were gone. They're just piles of rubble. Shocking. And so you'd see people living in these little shacks and you'd think, oh well maybe they just they live in a shack. Yeah. But actually they used to have a lovely house and now uh, they're living okay. in a shack because the house is all destroyed. Gotcha. Um so she, you know, she she had her own kind of, you know, um problems with you know, she's she's partially blind, she has speech problems, she's got three children, one of whom is paralysed, the house has been destroyed with all her possessions inside it it's heavy. Um, she's got a really tough life, but she was a lovely person, and mm. you know, really really nice she was, to, she was happy to have a picture spend, taken. yeah, really happy yeah. to have a picture, she was very keen to have a picture taken, oh, okay. um, and went and got her other son and brought him out so she could have, you know, he could have his picture taken Beautiful. and uh, now that I've actually finished working on all the images I'm going to be sending a load of prints I was back. Next question. there's a guy yeah. there's a guy that I that was staying with when I was there who I can send the prints to and he's going to take them down to the village and so people can have a, a picture you know as a thank you for it's a keepsake you know yeah it's a nice new, memento, yeah. new, new memory isn't it yeah. it's nice. and hopefully something that you know it's probably something that they wouldn't necessarily easily yeah. have access to you know uh, it's getting a nice picture taken, so uh, that'd be nice. Yeah, well, and, and did you do, um, did you do quite a few of those then? Yeah, so okay, we probably them. shot 10, 10 or eleven people. Okay. In, through the course of a, of a morning of just walking around, um, and it's yeah, it's fascinating talking to people and hearing whilst, their I stories. Mean, whilst we're on that subject, how do you how do you find it approaching people? Have you have you done a do you do, have you done a similar thing here in the UK, or is it something no, you normally I've, do, or is this the first time? I find it incredibly hard. Um, so you do when you just like you're just normal like the rest of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I I find it pretty much the the scariest thing yeah. you can possibly okay. do. Um, what's great actually when you're in a foreign country is that you can have a guy who's your tra- or, a, or a girl who's your translator, True. and then you can go. Could you go and speak to him? Over there? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and you can kind of you hide behind you know <laughs> yeah, your your so. your, yeah. your producer, yeah. um, and it just breaks the ice you know it means that you can have someone that literally is the one that goes up and says excuse me can we take a picture yeah yeah and and then i'm perfectly happy once someone's said they're fine with that i can chat to them and uh, sure. you know explain what i want to do and everything um so you've never done it here in the uk something similar no no and i think it would be i'd find it harder there's something about being in a different place yeah. in a different environment yeah i, I, I get that, that easy to, easy to get a uh, Translator over here, though. <laughs> yes, I could probably get a translator. Yeah, that'd be quite. Maybe I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> just, just act. Well, I mean, there are people like, uh, in all seriousness, you know, like um, street casting for fashion shoots and yeah. stuff. They have runners and producers and people who will literally do that it's for true. you. And so the photographer's not running out and mm. going up to people, but mm. they'll have people who will do that for them. So, I guess one takeaway from that is that if there are aspects of photography that you found really difficult like speaking to people or whatever you can often franchise you know you know um hire that out to someone else yeah. to get someone in to do it for you and it, you might have a friend who's really gregarious delegate. and outgoing delegate, delegate yeah, that's yeah. the word um, pass the buck yeah yeah, yeah. um <laughs> you know and, and it's the same with lots of things you know like assistants or makeup artists or you know so why not have someone that is their job is to go up to people and say 
come over True. and take a picture yeah. of you. Yeah. I mean, the, I mean, the flip side of that is that, and you're absolutely right. Yeah, it's not, it's not difficult to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the flip side is, that, I mean, for one of my going back many years now when I was at university, one of my projects was to go out and photograph people, Strangers. speak to, mm. speak to people, and take a portrait of them. Yeah. And and really, like you know, looking back in hindsight, I don't think the tutor gave two dams the quality of the actual image you know what yeah, I mean? it really was about having the experience trying to cross that you know, go up to somebody a complete stranger in the street and go would you mind if i took your portrait yeah. and that sort of thing and i mean I, I think at the time i managed to i think the, the brackets i put on myself that they had to be on a bench or something like that so yeah. everything was all these like, you know yeah. a line of like portraits but on a bench and that sort of thing but it was absolutely dreaded it like, yeah just like, oh no it's gonna be nightmare. but it gets easier man. Like, yeah. you know after yeah. you've done it the first time or the second time yeah. you're like okay Actually, everybody that I've spoken to has been totally fine been with okay. it. And the been worst okay. thing that can happen is they go, uh, no thanks. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that was the worst that could have happened. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah. that's not actually that bad. Yeah. You know, and, but I, yeah, but I do think if you, if, if you wanted to do it as a project, I think that would be a you know, pretty, pretty cool thing to do yeah. and get into, the, you know, get into the habit of doing it. Cause Definitely. It's and there are just as interesting a set of people walking around True. Reading Town Centre as there is in a Nepalese village. Yeah. It's just... Mm. Defining them and working out what makes them interesting. And we don't live in the sticks, you know. I know we're in London. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, as I mean, soon as you leave London, yeah. it just all goes, it goes out in the wild. This is pretty much what Reading Town Centre looks like. <laughs> it's a London people. This is the, week, the weekends. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, this, I mean, this one, one of the things to say about this was that um, the... Everything, everything about Nepal, you know, the, the landscapes, obviously, but also the architecture, and you know, even this is just a little corner shop, True. and it just looks True. amazing. Look colours there. This something. looks yeah, like yeah. something that you would pay thousands of pounds for a set builder to create for you for a film, and it was literally just Beautiful, the local yeah, yeah. shop. Beautiful. And um, yeah, so it's just it's so nice to go somewhere where it inspire everything about it inspires you and that's another thing you can do True. as well as a project is is just like change your surroundings and go somewhere different and you suddenly see the world with fresh eyes and yeah, um, yeah, yeah. that can be really good as Breath well. of fresh air yeah. Yeah. yeah but you know putting some constraints on yourself as well you know it can help like for me it was just like go out and I want to see portraits of people that you've like strangers that you've spoken to it's like well it could be anybody so like for yeah. me I, you know yeah. I'm like okay I'm going to do it on benches like that's the, I mean it's tacky yeah. and horrendous as that sounds in reality <laughs> you know but the point is it was like okay that's a focus you're making that into yeah. a series of shots yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? so whether it be Absolutely. shops yes. or anything yeah. like that or people walking dogs at the local yeah, park whatever or, yeah exactly yeah. but it's yeah. nice isn't it because you've, you've already had the introduction the introduction mm. to these people have already been made for you so yeah. they know it's going to happen yeah and they're really excited about and they're excited it. about yeah. it as well did you show them kind of the camera stuff do you do that sort of thing yeah, 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 yeah definitely yeah. 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 Everyone, okay. I, everyone I photographed the whole time I was there I was always showing people on the back of the camera cool. yeah. and people are generally really excited about it because it's something that they haven't seen very much I know some travel talks when they go out they do they do that sort of thing they take their shot and they also take an instax or something like that mm. so they can leave them leave them behind yeah. as well, which, is, which is quite a nice feature I really wish there was a printer that was you know this size so on powered. a battery <laughs> that, that you could just print out a, yeah you know six by four picture from your digital camera and i've looked yeah. into it and i can't really find anything that there are there, there are, are them for the smaller there, you know yeah. the smaller little toy cameras that wayne uses those ones right. the mirrorless <laughs> ones <laughs> no, Can canon used to do them they used to they were a dice up printer and they would take batteries oh yeah. did they because yeah. I've got one a selfie printer it's yeah, called yeah, yeah that's right I don't yeah, think you can have one. it on batteries yeah I don't selfie know if they still printer. do that model anymore they're right. called selfies yeah yeah S-E-L-P-H-Y see what they've done there yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean they've been around for, for a long time yeah. they're little dice up prints yeah, aren't they yeah, so great. the longevity yeah. of the, the ink in, in the print is yeah that's for decades yeah really okay yeah thank you Steve interesting right Wayne my image, well, mine's in uh, a, a beautiful location in the country of England, uh, in the studio, dare I say. <laughs> and um, I've got to say about mine really, it was, you know, it's, it's, it's an engineered shot, it's a, there's a concept, was there a there's client? a story, uh, that the client, this was actually for, for, for a launch of a lens system, so okay. uh, this is actually quite a few years ago, this shot. Um, and you'll like it, Joe. There's, there's gels used in this as well. I know, so right up your street, oh, yeah. you know. Um, so my concept behind this really uh, had sort of six looks to do. So it's a bit like a fashion editorial, but it was it was it was live in front of a VIP audience. This, this shoot, 
and I had six looks to do. At the time we got to do them, I had about two and a half hours to do six looks, and that's with hair changes and everything, so it was very, very full on. Um, and my sort of concept behind this was almost, uh, the title of it was a Princess Warrior. So I wanted to take sort of a bit of inspiration from sort of a Kill Bill kind of thing okay, yeah, with yeah. a bit of a modern twist um, and bring it into that modern environment, obviously with this beautiful vibrancy of makeup and strength and colour. So how many lights you got here? There's, uh, oh God, I don't know, I've got to cast my mind back. Uh, People always think that you just know immediately. Oh, like how many? Uh, 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 yeah, to know. <laughs> like, to know. Yeah, because yeah, it was a few years ago as yeah, well. Yeah. It's, um, I should that, mention actually just very briefly one, that my shot was actually lit, uh, but with one light. One light. Oh, of course, it was. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, yeah we've got to cover it, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. So uh, just. Uh, just I've got one, two, three, four, possibly five. Okay. Uh, in this shot, you won't see the fifth one. The fifth one you would have seen in the, in, a, in a full figure. So. In this shot, you won't actually see that at all. Um, incredibly bright feet. <laughs> yeah, they were big bright feet. Yeah, yeah. clown shoes. Yeah. yeah. So well, we've just got a helicopter. A helicopter going over the heads. Landing. Yeah. You want a background noise? But also, just yeah. add as well that if you can see everything moving and me swaying, I'm not absolutely <laughs> smashed. We are actually on Steve's boat. We're on Steve's boat. Steve's boat. I'm just like I notice myself. I'm swaying. They're gonna think. Yeah. The thing we're moving, we are. Yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, so that that's the way I wanted to go with that was to create that feel, mm. and uh, you know a bit of interesting instead of just playing studio wall because uh, it was in the studio. Uh, this background is literally just a colorama uh, paper, but it's it's been folded sort of in mm. four inch widths into a concertina mm -hmm. kind of effect, mm -hmm. and then thrown on its side. Mm -hmm. um, so it's done that, and this background is actually green. It's a mm. green background with a red gel. So it gives you that deep crimson sort of colour. You didn't like the green? I did shoot it with the green on one of the shots. And then just when we did a, a clothing change, obviously colouring was different, hair was different. Oh, fair and enough. Okay, so you'd already shot it with the green. So you shot, shot, it, shot it with the green and then we just flipped it around a little bit to carry the story on in the short space of time we had within a live, a live view session. Because it has that richness of a like a red velvet curtain, mm. you know, like mm. a stage curtain, yeah. which is really nice. Yeah, it works well with the makeup there as well. And that's basically just you know one light on one side, so that's why you see that shadow mm. depth on one side and the highlight on the other because of the peak of the folds. Yeah, so quite quite that a sim simple approach. Um, and uh, yeah, 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 I see you got this beautiful uh, sort of circle of light above the hair. I see a lot of. A lot of hair shots where that looks really flat and lifeless, but mm. it's nice. You know, that's beautiful. With the lighting on the hair there is is really nice. So where's that? Where's that highlight coming from? It is actually above model soft box. It is above and and back a little bit. So it's angled forward a touch. Um, Do you mean back? What do you mean? Uh, just behind slightly. So it's it's behind her. Yeah, only 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 a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's it's almost you, you can almost if you look at the angle of the light, you'd almost be feathering it a little bit, really. Um, and then obviously you can see a, a you know a bit of a, a rim light on on one side, a bit yep. of an edge light. Uh, that's that's coming through a reflector with the grid, just to give a little bit of punch and separation there. Um, you can see a reflector in the eyes anyway. Definitely a see. little bit of kicking back in there to lift that tone and give a bit of under warmth. And the the main light, Jake will love this, is actually a, a beauty dish. Yeah, I love you know, the dish one, so that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is it? Obviously, not 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 as close as you'd expect because uh, it's my it's my main light. <laughs> you know, so it's yeah. quite far back. How, how far back, Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd love to show you behind the scenes. I I've see. got a behind the scenes of this. I would probably say it's eight feet. Eight feet. Yeah, because I've got to fill a whole scene with this. You know. You know, a whole scene. So I don't know to shoot. I just use it as a small soft box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't yeah. even know that you could use a beauty dish like as a close up. So, so there you go, you know. <laughs> Wayne's well, taking a bit because we always have this debate, uh, we should say. I'm going to use it use the term loosely. As to um like for me, anybody who's been on workshops know I have my beauty dish like literally about arms distance Touching away distance. from the model, like yeah. super close to yeah. get that drop off. But Wayne just uses it as a yeah. As, a, as a spot, yeah, we we, we use it in, we use it we use it in fashion for much further back, you know. It's yeah. a, it's got a multiplex yeah. of uses. <laughs> cool. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything that you would do differently in this shot? 
Um, That's not a leading question, by the way. I'm not <laughs> like, is it, yeah, yeah. yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it that bad? Don't, don't you like it? No, I, th- I think the feel behind this for me was, I, you know, in the studio, I just wanted to give something with a bit of a cinematic feel. That, that was the direction mm. I was going for. I wanted a bit okay. of a cinematic feel in terms of Definitely its, done that. its aspect and its depth, like you said, the backgrounds yeah, yeah. and the, the softness of the tones and things, but with that rich punch, I just wanted a bit of that. How much, um, how much did you put into it? And also, how much did, you know, presumably... It, it, what I'm trying to say is it, the styling and the, the props and the, the outfit and the, yeah. the makeup and everything is all lovely, really nice. Yeah. And the, yeah, the sword is a beautiful sword and the, the is it a kimono or a gown or uh, uh, whatever that she's wearing is really yeah. beautifully patterned and everything. And yeah. so if it was just a girl in a vest top with a cheap katana... It, and it would, normal makeup, it, would, it, 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 it wouldn't, wouldn't work. It no. wouldn't have the it'd same effect. It still be beautifully effect. lit, though. It'd be lovely. Yeah, it'd be <laughs> lovely <laughs> lit, but it just wouldn't have that very epic often you quality. Say that. <laughs> Whereas this looks like it could be a, <laughs> you know, a movie poster because yeah. it's, it's so well accessorized and so well styled. Yeah. And and how how important is that to yeah. you when you're doing something like yeah, that? Yeah, it is important because it it does build the story and um, you know things can be can be built in a good way or they can be built in mm. in a not so good way and. I think, you know, I, I obviously, for for majority of the time, rely on my team as well. It's not, not all down to me. Of course, I have the idea and the concept, mm. and then I share that with my respective team, and we, we build that idea, and everybody knows the direction we're going. So all the respective components are brought in to, to make that story work. Um, obviously, the, the wigs are one thing. Um, yeah, the stylist brings the clothing and the accessories to match where we were going. The sword's actually my own. Mm. Um <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's just Southampton's just... a rough place. <laughs> What's outside of London, mate? What do you expect? <laughs> um, so yeah, it did, it just helped. Yeah, it did, it did build it. So yeah, mm. it, it is important because I think you know if you didn't have that, as much as Joe was saying, it's it's nicely lit. Take the compliment. Um, it, it could look so different. Mm. It still looked nice, but in a completely different way. I yeah. think a lot of photographers will spend infinite money on lenses and gear and, and lighting and things like that and then just chuck anything actually in front of the camera mm-hmm. yeah. and often it's what's in front of the camera that really makes the shot and you can take a very simple image of a beautiful subject matter yeah. and it can look as amazing as a really really crafted image of yeah. a fairly ordinary subject matter Yes, mm-hmm. and so and, and often when I do stuff on TV shows I feel very lucky because I have the benefit of the the sets and the actors and the costumes and all the things that they've brought from the, yeah, the true, TV production true. that I can then yeah. put in front put of my lens. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, you know, this is a good example of, of bringing both those elements together. Yeah. So you yeah. take a really nice subject matter and then light it really nicely and photograph it nicely and you get an exceptional result. Yeah. You did, I had things, you know, I could drop in front of this lens as well and uh, that was... <laughs> It's a funny story behind it because there were some uh, cameras on test for the the attendees to use these VIP guests. There was there was just this one man from from the US. Sorry, US. He was still he was standing over there with a cigar end in his mouth that wasn't lit because obviously we were in a studio and uh, he just started picking up cameras and standing in front of me while I was shooting. You know. Oh wow! And during a live shoot. Wow. So we're just taking oh, pictures right. of ambient light. You know, it's wow. taking full advantage of it. But, wow. uh, it was an entertaining day, but. Uh, Product that we use, live with, work with, you know, adore, like, love, yeah, used once before. Stroke. <laughs> yeah, stroke <laughs> takes a bit, yeah. Just go around the room. So, Wayne, do you want to start us off? Yes, because I actually I don't, don't know if the camera can see that low either, so I might just look low and really hard. <laughs> yeah, where it crops. <laughs> yeah. My, mine's, mine's a really uh, basic, sensible piece of kit that probably most people have got in different makes or brands or forms. And This is just. Top That's tier. the trusty old tripod, you know. Tripod. That What's some that? some people will use, some people don't. Um, a lot of people may have bigger ones, smaller ones, portable ones, backpack ones, everything like that. But uh, this this is this is sort of my beast. So uh, this is the uh, the Gitzo GT three five four three LS. Classic. Sounds, Classic. Sounds something a Lexus would it's, make. Yeah, it? it's good that they thought of a really snappy name <laughs> for it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So this is really nice. Um, little short overview of this. Um, it, it looks quite big, and it does extend even even taller than me. So okay. uh, 
yeah, you've got a good four four leg telescopic length on this. Nicest little twist locks. Really easy to use and function with. Um, and uh, it's carbon fiber. So in, even though it looks big and bulky, it is actually for its size quite lightweight. Mm. Of course, they don't come with a tripod head. Uh, you have to buy that separately because everybody's got their own likes. Whether people like pistol grips or tilt and pan three ways or things like that. I'm a big fan of the ball heads. So um, on here, I've got the new the new Gitso one on this as well. And this uh, the ball head on this is titanium. So really, really nice, really, really smooth. Uh, and takes a good camera away as well. So if you've got bigger camera gear, it means that when you lock it off in position, it will it will hold. It's not going to start slipping away like some of the pistol grip stuff does. So true. Yeah, I got pistol yeah. grip that slips. Yeah. This sounds like the kind of question that they ask on QVC to get the, the <laughs> leading answer. But it's a genuine question because I yeah. actually don't really know about these kind of things. What is the advantage of titanium? What? Why would you have titanium over whatever else they make these out of? Um, because it, it's it's a lot smoother and lighter as well. You get some of them with the steel ball heads in them. I mean, they they they. They don't run smooth. They don't lock as good. They wear more over time. Um, a lot of contributing factors, really. So the main thing, though, is just the weight. You've got carbon fiber legs, which yeah. are super lightweight. So yeah. I suppose it just makes sense to have the lightest metal. Yeah, yeah but, because I mean, this stuff up here, Kath, is it, absolutely rock solid. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's just got a little little twist lock for the center column on this. It's really nice. Oh, I don't had that. Uh, it's just slide up. You can lock that off. It's just really, really quick. Mm -hmm. and advantage of this one is that um, I've got a little release lock lever here which is like on a ratchet system. So I can undo that and I can take this whole centerpiece out. And that's what I call a 100 meter, hundred millimeter bowl. So it means I could drop a, another unit in here, even for like a video uh, fluid head, straight into this system with a 100 meter bowl. So very universal. Okay. But um, yeah, absolutely rock solid piece of kit. I know these aren't cheap to get so. I still dread to think. <laughs> okay, yeah. don't ask the price on this one. Go and check it out online. Um, make sure you're sitting down when you, yeah, we'll uh, when you check that out. Stuff in there, yeah. Put the links in for that. But uh, get so. Yeah, so it's uh, really good. Super strong. I can hang off the bottom of this thing, and I have put that good to, to know, the test. Mate. Good to know. Because they said it was so strong that you could hang off it, so I did. And they're absolutely true to their word, you know. <laughs> oh, you've got to test that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my thing it's um Perfect. yeah just a basic staple that most people use you know sometimes studios or locations cool. so uh, but that's that's my one that i use today so nice gear whore today <laughs> very nice <laughs> cool so you want to pass that over to i think Steve yeah has to borrow it for a second yeah so i'm going to actually right. use this to illustrate to illustrate my my own uh, piece of kit which is quite different because it's this is very expensive and you know, been engineered by a big company and I'm sure they poured thousands of pounds of research and development into it. My one is a little widget that I came up with and got a friend who's a metal worker to make for me. Um, and basically, the problem that I could foresee when I went to Nepal was that usually you put a light on a light stand. Mm -hmm. And light stands are designed to be used in a studio um, which has a nice flat floor, and so warm. a light, pardon? Warm. warm coffee, yeah, yeah mm. big toilets, Sensible. You know, yes. very, yeah. Um, and so it's it's a small set of legs with a very tall column, and it's inherently unstable. Unstable, yeah. Um, and if you're in a windy, on a windy mountainside, and the floor is sloping like this, it's absolutely no use whatsoever. You 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 know, it's just no, it's not going to work. You basically would have to have someone holding it at all times. And so I was thinking that maybe if I could use a tripod to put my light on, then I can extend the legs individually. Yeah. Um, and so then whatever the terrain is, if it's on boulders or anything, I can just extend the legs to whatever, wherever I need them and the central column that the actual light is on will be vertical. Very and the, the weight mm. of the light is then mm. going mm. Sort of vertically down. So the problem is... So your bit is just the silver bit here. Yes, exactly. Example. So this is a spigot which you would normally use. is built Standard. into the top of a, yeah. a light stand. And it has a, um, a screw thread on it. Half inch thread, yeah. And so does the, the tripod. So what you really want is to put that on there. Because your light goes on this end. Oh, your light goes onto here, yeah. But you've got two male threads. So this is the simplest thing in the world. It's just a small piece of metal with a hole drilled through the middle of it that has a, a thread and that can just then screw onto there and your spigot screws into there and then suddenly your tripod is 
a lighting stand. And if your ground is sloping, you know, 45 degrees, you just extend one of the legs of the Lights tripod of and, yeah. and it's super stable. And so, and you tend to have, like you were saying about hanging off the bottom yeah. of the tripod, <laughs> you can yeah. also hang a, I had a, a just a tote bag, a, a canvas tote bag, yeah. and there's always rocks, rocks. or something yeah, around, yeah, yeah. or some soil, or sand, or whatever, snow, and so I would just put a couple of rocks in the bag, yeah. hang it on the bottom yeah. of the tripod, Weight it down. and it would all feel super stable and like it wasn't going to blow over. Mm. So that actually, you know, I hoped that this would work when I went, and it worked brilliantly. It was I, it's, yeah, I think it's so... I mean, it's, it's ingenious, but it, have you did you look to see if this already exists anyway? I mean, it just sounds um, crazy that yeah. it sounds like such an obvious solution. Yeah, yeah. I I didn't do that much research beforehand, but actually, since coming back, I have been looking mm. to see if it does exist, and I haven't found it. The only thing I've found is when you um, in the, the the spigot, you tend to have uh, a small screw thread. And a large screw thread. I don't actually. Do you know what the small screw thread's even for? Um, they tend to have one either one yeah, yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, there are still some fits of isn't attachments. That a tripod hole, that one that goes in the bottom of the camera. Um, yes, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it would work bottom, for that. Plate, so anyway, yeah. there are there are versions of these which have a different sized thread, thread yeah. in each end. Um, Course, but I haven't course, seen, course. so it's just an adapter, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I haven't seen one that is just literally, yeah. so, you know, the same all the way through, so you can attach the spigot to, light for light. to the, to the, uh, to yeah. the tripod. Um, so, yeah, not really, I haven't, I, not that I've seen, I mean, I, tell me if I'm wrong, but uh, I haven't seen them. Uh, yeah, no, I haven't, so, it's, it just blows uh, my mind. Uh, and the, the good thing of that is, obviously, if you're travelling like you were in Nepal, you, you don't want to be carrying other big, heavy stands true. around, do you? Mm. So yeah, true. If you need, need it for a one-off shot. Or yeah. one light position, then you've got your tripod. Yeah. You just swap yeah, it yeah. over. So, I mean, you know, uh, in the studio we've got C stands, you know, where they yeah. have the third floating leg which you can mm. put on. But I mean, they're heavy. Yeah, they're really heavy. They're big, really, they're yeah. long, they're heavy. And, the, and they're know. supposed to be, you know, yeah. 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 And they don't really fold down very they're well. Definitely, not, <laughs> definitely yeah. not a tool for taking uh, yeah. uh, in a backpack to the forward. Yeah. So I've, I've considered producing some of these, manufacturing them, and, and selling them. So, you know, if, if anyone on that watching this would be interested in that and you know thinks that's that's a project a product that appeals to them let us know because it's it's a good way to do a little bit of market research and see if there's any interest out there because i think it's a brilliant way to be able to utilize your tripod which most photographers have already mm. um as a very effective light stand for for doing location shooting it's super easy just to pop that on your back i know that's like yeah, way exactly. hardly anything yeah. as well and yeah. because the spigot and the adapter are two separate things it even folds down you know kind of it's, it's a you can put it Easily in your wallet almost yeah, exactly. you know, it's, yeah, it's yeah. so small and portable it's really good okay so yeah okay. so yeah so yeah. no links from you no because links you can't yet. buy it yeah. but if you do want it yeah basically let us know yeah and um, Steve will obviously yeah. just obviously just go out the back into the into the into the workshop into the workshop and just, uh, <laughs> just start machine one out. If you want a solid gold one studded with rubies, I'll do that for you. It'll only, be like twenty thousand pounds. Only twenty thousand pounds. Yeah, <laughs> limited edition, mind. Yeah, it's almost as much as the tripod. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, nice man. Nice. 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 Yeah, excellent. Okay. Handy. Um, We'll leave it there actually because I might actually, uh, strangely, all, I, I don't know what you thought about this. <laughs> we have an all of our, the irony of it. All of our <laughs> kits, do, all of our items do tend to be or how are based around stands and that sort of thing. <laughs> so what I've brought along is is this little again very lightweight pop in your camera bag, your pocket, whatever that sort of thing. But rain rack. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just a really cool the shopping shop. bag. <laughs> uh, um, so what it is is. It, it's basically like a like a water ring type thing that you fill up with water or sand or anything like that, and then you then put that around your your light stand. So it's great, you know, to weigh down a light stand on location or on a studio or something like that. You know, you can always get um, you're always going to have usually going to be water there or something like that. I wouldn't probably wouldn't recommend salt water, but you could just fill it up with sand quite easily. Um, I think it takes a liter of water, so that's a you know it's it's going to be a kilo that's going to be mm. hanging from the stand, uh, which is, I mean it's it, it's such a clever idea, and you know using it using it a lot, you just have it there and you just always got it in your bag if you if you do ever need it, and this wraps around and gets out of the way, so you can so it's all carryable and things like that. Just dry it out at the end and you're ready to go. Just fold it 
hold it back up. It's a good example, actually, of how there are lots of bits of gear in a studio that are how they are because that's how they've always been, yeah, not yeah. because it's the best way. And the sandbag for an, in a studio, it's not actually very easy to put it on a light stand because you put it over one of the legs and it slides yeah, off, or yeah. you hang it in the middle and it, it sits on the ground and doesn't you know, bring its weight to bear. And so having something that's basically the same thing and just goes around the stand. Yeah, because you could do a it... a brilliant idea. You know, even on... Like floor stands, I use it on floor stands as well because you yeah. can't hang on, you can't hang anything off a floor yeah. stand. But if you've got something up quite high or something like that, then this is you know it's great for floor stands as well. That's a brilliant idea. Um, so I'll put all the details and mm. stuff in there yeah, as, as well. And it's good good at the end of the day as well because you could also then if you're thirsty you can just drink it. Well, you could fill it with wine <laughs> and uh, have a celebratory <laughs> drink at the end of the day. Yeah. Everybody gather around. <laughs> We're going to drink the stuff, folks. You don't want to order it journey, I can use it as a soft cushion. Yes. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's it for our gear that we'd like to recommend and uh, that we use day to day and that sort of thing. This last section we'll move on to is things that we get inspiration from and ideas for you know for you guys to be inspired by as well to check out and that sort of thing. So, Steve, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, so my thing to be inspired by is the Adventures in Design podcast uh, which I've been listening to for a few years now and it's gone through various iterations uh, from being just a couple of friends that were making a podcast uh, through to now it's a, a split model where you can listen to the first I think, hour for free um, and then if you pay a monthly subscription I think it's $10, not very much uh, you get a second hour as well and various special episodes and things like that. So it's partially behind a paywall, but there's also, you can try it out for free as well. Um, and because it has that uh, model of actually earning him money, um, he puts a huge amount of effort into it. It's four days a week um, and you know, you've got quite a lot of content. So it's perfect if you're retouching or you know doing anything like that and you have that regular... Uh, thing to listen to uh, in the office, which is really nice. How often do they come out? Um, four times a week. Four times, four times a week. Wow. Yeah. Um, well, when you set it up, we really works on it four days a week. Right. Yeah. No, they four episodes a week, and they're two hours each. Uh, yeah, more or less. Whoa. It's, it's yeah, it's impressive. Become him. Yeah. Basically. Like, yeah. <laughs> so he a lot of content. Yeah. Wow. Fair play to him. Yeah. yeah. What sort of stuff does he do? So does he they it? have um, they have regular themed. Uh, episodes so he has various people who will come once a month there's a guy who's a vinyl toy designer who okay. he does an episode once a month that's about the vinyl toy world and there's a, a couple of guys who run a, a design studio called DKNG and they do an episode once a month about their world and the projects that they've been working on um, so Mark who, who does the podcast is from a, a poster illustration and design background and so a lot of it okay. is um, coming from that part of the creative industry um, but he a lot of the things that obviously apply to a freelance poster designer also apply to a freelance photographer and he also gets all sorts of different people in to interview um, so they do stuff in the music industry um, loads of different types of creatives they had a guy who was a, one of the big um, creative directors at Nike um, they had someone who um, worked at one of the big car companies. They have lots of different designers okay. and illustrators and people like that, and he'll do an interview with, with them. They've had a couple of uh, skateboard uh, people, Ed Templeton was on it. Oh, really? Um, sure, my age. You know, they had uh, <laughs> the guy whose name I can't remember, but who designed, who did the Screaming Hand yep. graphic for yeah, Santa yeah, Cruz. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think Phillips. Anyway. Oh, so um, did you say that was the guy who... Interviewed the Obey guy as well. Is that the yes, one? yes, he did Shepherd yeah. Ferry as well. Yeah, uh, so they get some really good mm. people on there, and they have really interesting conversations. And yeah, I just, I just really enjoy it. So it's a part of my work okay. day when I'm in the office is to just have that in the background. And so, so he's basically really always doing what we're trying to do. So just, <laughs> just, 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 just kind of done. Yeah, you're first, first, yeah. doing it <laughs> first and last. <laughs> but he's not doing it about specifically yeah. about photography. True. So you know anything. I, th I feel like sometimes people think, well, I'm interested in photography, so I only want to listen to photography yeah. things and read yeah. books about photography. And actually, you can find really good, actionable uh, advice from a 
psychiatrist or someone that works for a car company or sure. a you know poster designer or an illustrator and some of the different people have similar struggles even if they're in different uh, creative mm. industries so yeah i really enjoy it good one yeah. um, okay oh, oh, I, I, haven't, yeah. I haven't checked out Adventures myself, in design. I to check it out okay yeah i'm not even aware of that one so uh yeah nice nice intro <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll jot that down in a minute and listen to it on the way home yeah. <laughs> wayne Mine's very, uh, mine's very visual, uh, well, old school visual if you want to call it that. Uh, mine's a book. A book? A what? A book? A, a book. You know those things? <laughs> hey, this is a, a photo book. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, this no, yeah, I don't even, I don't, I don't even understand what you're saying <laughs> right now. Well, you know, as photographers, <laughs> a thousand dead trees. That's yeah. all that, yes, that's <laughs> as all photographers, we all know that in this digital age, it's still really nice to see our work in print. You know, yeah, where, sure. where it comes to, comes alive, doesn't it? You know hanging on the wall on billboards magazines that think, sort of thing I think it's a psychological like it's almost immortalised a little bit when yeah. it's like, physical yeah yeah it is but yeah. I mean it, it's the same with when you when you're accessing visual media as well I still buy magazines I print magazines mm. and a lot of people go well, you're, like, the, you're the one I'm the guy <laughs> <laughs> I'm the guy yeah yeah <laughs> and it's like no I, you know I, I get you know it's, it's, it's a different you know it's, it's yeah. a different visual stimuli it I think, is yeah and I think it's not, you know, because I come from a film background, so, you know, as, as in, you know, before digital was around, so seeing that in print, I know I don't look that young, Jay, because all your eyes go really <laughs> wide. Then, no, it's, it's good to have you <laughs> here covering that demographic. Yeah, you, know. you just caught that then. You, when you used play to that back. types in the 1800s. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, but mine is more of an inspiration. Mine's an inspiration, uh, my, my little go-to today, and it's actually about, uh, this, this book called Review is actually a uh, specific photographer uh, called Eugenio Recuenco, who's actually a Spanish photographer. Does a lot of campaigns. It also directs TV commercials, commercials as well for, say, uh, um, Christian Rishi perfume ads and things like that. So, what do I love about this guy? He still shoots kind of old school in the studio. You know, it's not doing a lot of CGI or anything. If if you see one of his shots, uh, it's actually a TV commercial, uh, which he turned into stills advertising as well. You know, there's a whole hotel foyer with elevators and things like that I mean the whole thing is built in the studio from the ground up major sets major sets you know a uh, big campaign he did for Lavazza Coffee with mm. uh, superheroes supping their espresso uh, in, in the US and the sort of tall building they're all in studio all the, all the cityscapes are all painted backgrounds all done by hand and you can see some of that going on but it is it's not a case of like I don't want to leave the studio. Let's go hire no. out or rent out this location. It is stylized. The sets are yeah, stylized. Yeah, they are stylized. It's not just a case of oh, let's just do it here. Sort of yeah, yeah. No, and it, and it's nice to see that there, there's still budgets out there for stuff mm. like that. You know, because our, our, <laughs> our industry's changed so much. But uh, very filmic sort of feel to this. Very cinematic style uh, in his work and his lighting. Uh, tremendous to see this guy at work and the, the imagery in this, which you won't see with me holding up a book. But um, yeah, you can flick through it. I don't you think can, we're probably allowed to show the images. Yeah, uh, yeah. So just having a little flick through. I mean, the stories behind these things. I will just say that you you very kindly actually got me one of these one of these books yeah. a year or so ago, and I, yeah, you know, the imagery in there is absolutely stunning. Yeah, it is. I mean, really there's really such great phenomenal. stories in these things, and such a range. You know, another man he's a fan of his gels, but it looks a bit Jake. You know? Yeah, no, but you know, but he, but he's been doing it a long time, and he's not. He doesn't yeah. even care how he gets the shot, as long as he gets the shot that he wants. Yeah, and I think in I mean, some of the behind the scenes, I've I've seen him using you know like the lens babies and that sort of stuff. So he don't care how he does it. He can no, shoot. He can shoot yeah. five four, or he can shoot you know medium format with a, with a lot art lens. Absolutely. However, however, whatever it takes to get the shot. Yeah, I mean, I know you may not be seeing this, you know, uh, from from the camera from there, but. Uh, check out this guy's work, Eugenio Recuenco. I mean, such a diverse range, and almost a little bit obscure in creativity sometimes as well. But uh, big storyteller, mm. lovely story sets, uh, lit and styled just beautifully. This uh, is another good example of some uh, of a photographer with a very strong sense of style. Yeah. Because like you know, I see one of his images, and you do get like that is his. Yeah. You do, you can definitely get that. Yeah, which is good. You, you you know from that, and um, it's almost like for me, it's it's nice that he's carrying traditional skill sets that we used to have, mm. but in the modern world of digital photography, mm. and he's carried that through, with without shifting anywhere almost. You know, it's nice to see that that traditional form factor carried through, but. 
yeah, beautiful work, absolutely beautiful. Also, um, how amazing to have the resources to actually be able to realize your vision. Yeah, you yeah. know, I would love to do, you know, build a, an 80 foot water tank yeah. in a studio <laughs> yeah, and know. You know, have boats on it and things, but yeah. nobody's going to give me the money to do the that. But he's, he's managed to uh, kind of get into this position in the, in the world where. He has the vision and he also has the, the money and the resources. The resources to, to and the support it. and the yeah. go-ahead from the client. Yeah, it's, it's, phenomenal. It's, it's beautiful to still see that that's mm. going on mm. somewhere because it's the wind of massive. That being said, yeah. though, when we spoke you know, in your interview, you said that you have to be able to, nobody's going to come to you and give you that budget. Um, yeah. You have yeah. to prove that you can do it. You can yeah. do it. So yeah, yeah. I'm sure at some stage he had to either get together friends, set builders and that sort of stuff to actually get yeah. We'd, I need to, if this is what I want to start doing, so yeah, yeah. I, I presume, Maybe, yeah, you start off with the five foot water tank and then you yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think yeah. anybody just walks up to you and go, Yeah, here's a quarter of a million, like, yeah. you know, let's you know, see, show me what yeah. you can do. Sort of you have thing. to be yeah. the guy that does guy. that thing, mm -hmm. and yeah. then people will give you the budget for it. But tremendous to see. So, mine's an inspiration uh, of, a, of, a, of a fellow photographer that, that carries mm. traditional skill sets through in the modern world um, cool. with obviously, you know, amazing results in his work. with a very cinematic style so very yeah cool. Eugenio Recuenco cool. and this yeah. book is Review he's got a few out but uh, this is called Review one of his most recent ones so okay. uh, yeah check that out I'll really say, really nice I'll definitely link to the, you know, his website because you know, I think there's loads of behind the scenes of his sets mm. and some stuff on there as yeah, well I know when, I, when I got this book from you I, you know, I went, immediately went on to see like, how he's doing it and it is phenomenal yeah, yeah it's nice a good one good one thank you yeah uh, my one is again another podcast and uh, following on from what Steve was saying you know I, I'm sure as with all of us here we spend a lot of hours doing retouching and that sort of thing and I, I do love to listen to a podcast you know whilst I'm retouching just getting my head down and uh, listening to it and I've been binge listening to uh, Chase Jarvis his Chase Jarvis live podcast and I'll be perfectly honest he's been obviously doing it a lot for many many years and I think years ago I was put off by it as being, I think we mentioned at the start, just being maybe too photographic centric. Mm. It was like, you know, interviewing photographers and that sort of stuff, and it was becoming, it was getting a bit similar. You know, it was like, uh, what inspired you, and like, how did you start? And my dad gave me a camera, and it was like, you know, it's you know the, 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 in that in that voice. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, 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 you know, it gets they get a bit, so they get a bit shady, You know yeah. what I mean? Um, <laughs> But I have to say, you know, going going back recently, the last last couple of months, I've just been absolutely obsessed with listening to him because he is interviewing some along the lines of, you know, inspirational entrepreneurs. So, like Tim Ferriss, the guy who did the four hour work week and, and that sort of thing, you know, New York bestseller and that sort of thing. Or whether it be, you know, there are photographers in there, but there'll also be art directors or writers or just generally people who are just super positive about getting stuff done you know and like their mindset you know how how are they just why are why are this group of people doing 10 times the amount of work that, mm. that I'm doing like how is that possible you know yeah, I yeah. feel like I'm busy and then, you, and then you hear these guys and it's just like wow you know yeah I feel a little bit guilty but then I also take that as inspiration that's my inspiration mm. to be yeah, okay yeah. this is you know this is your mindset so he, he talks to a lot of like I said, people who are just super positive and great ideas about how to be more positive and get more stuff done. Uh, and yeah, it's really, really good. So yeah, definitely. Good if you cool. get, if you get mm. a chance. And it's good actually because, you know, I saw this guy's work, thought it was, looked amazing. I was like, well, I could do that if I had the budget. And <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> easy to make excuses uh, yeah. and imagine that everybody else has more time and more resources and things came easy to them. And then you listen to interviews with people, and actually, usually they just worked really, really hard, really hard, hard yeah, for a really yeah. long time, yeah. and the, their their overnight success actually was fifteen years in the making. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, uh, yeah. and so these kind of interviews are really good to actually yeah. make you realise that. Put it into perspective, don't it? It's, yeah. it's, it's it not, is super it's easy. Not a one day or an forget, overnight, especially with social mm. media. You know, we just see everybody's showreel of yeah. like the best possible highlights of you yeah. know, of, our, of our lives and that sort of thing. But the reality is that. It is so so many hours. Blood, blood, sweat, and tears. And in fact, you know, on that, what you know, saying that one of the one of the main sort of recurring topics that keeps coming up is this balance that he talked like. How do you balance your even you're achieving all this, but yeah. how are you balancing that with your your home life, your personal, personal life, life family sort of life? And it's like that's the biggest thing because these guys aren't just running these you know multinational companies you know in their spare time or Monday to Friday nine to five it's not happening you no, know? no it's you know they're, they're doing it just like day in day out and it's part of their part of their lives and I think you know for, for me and I'm sure you guys as well it 
can be can feel like that for sure. Yeah. You know, just, just to make sure that you, you get done what you want to get done. Yeah. Yeah. We're our own bosses at the end of the day. Yeah, it's not yeah. like you know anybody standing over us with a hammer or a knife. And it is like we want to get it done because we yeah. want to get it done. You know? yeah. And it's easy sometimes to think, well, I I've been sitting at my desk for eight hours today. And then you realise that for four hours of that, you're actually scrolling through Facebook or Instagram or <laughs> looking at or, funny or, memes on the, you know, on the or, internet. Or dead book, as I call yeah. it. You, know? <laughs> you watch your life disappear in yeah. front of you for hours on it. And <laughs> actually, yeah, realising how hard some people work with, with yeah. such focus yeah. is, is really inspiring. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so Good. Chase Jarvis Live, yeah. definitely check that out. He's, he does, obviously, they're all podcasts, but I think you said they're all videos, actually. Mm, videos as well. I haven't actually watched the videos, but yeah, it's great to have them on when you're retouching, that sort of thing. Yeah. Perfect. Three top okay. pieces yeah. from us. Right then, we are going to close it out. Uh, I think we've covered everything we wanted to get. Obviously, uh, as always, when the three of us get together, it's gone on a little long, but uh, yeah. you know, I'm, sure there's, I'm sure there's some content in there for them, but yeah. Um, and this is the first one, like I said, you know, we yeah. go either way. We're gonna we're gonna play with it. We're gonna interview some people. We're gonna carry on play with this. Any feedback from you guys? Any comments? Anything, anything like that? Anything any ideas? See in the future? Yeah. yeah. Any topics? Content? Gear, Somebody ideas. that you think you know here in the UK that you think oh, I'd love for you to interview them or get in touch with them? Yeah. You know, let's just you know we can reach out to them. You know, the worst thing that as we as we know we just said before the worst thing they can do is say no. Yeah. So, um, or, or even not in the UK, three men will travel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if they're paying us, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. It's paying. Oh, clearly, it's passed all the way. So yeah, thank you for watching this one, and we'll uh, we shall see you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you.